Hi, and welcome to Me On 5 with Derry Runlet. Today's inaugural show is Mrs. Maine and Miss Maine for America. So we're at the uh, at my house uh, in the backyard uh, with uh, two people and another dear friend that I am so proud to have on my show. We have Mrs. Maine for 2020 and Miss Maine for America 2020 and the woman who made it all possible, Deborah Pronovost. I'm going to start off with you, Deb. Uh, this is like the third or fourth time we've uh, been together. Pleasure. Uh, a pleasure is mine because you asked me to judge this pageant last year. Uh, one of the bucket list moments of life. I also judged the Miss uh, Maine USA pageant uh, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I called all my best friends in high school. I go, you're not going to believe what I'm doing now. And I feel the same way to have you back on the show. Congratulations. Uh, Deborah. first of all, tell us the difficulty of doing this show with the COVID thing going on. How difficult was it? So COVID-19 definitely um, created a few hurdles for us this past year. We moved our pageant twice. Um, because, you know, the first one was just simply because it was just so new. We didn't know what we were dealing with in April. And then we moved it to June. And in June was when Governor Mills allowed us to go back in with 50, uh, an audience of 50 or less. Um, however, when I spoke with the hotel, even though they were trying to do the best they could do, I just felt they also didn't have um, the sort of precautions ready and um, it, it just was so new that I was afraid to risk um, certainly the contestants, our volunteers, and I didn't want to be someone who was responsible to, you know, we, we do so many things to raise um, um, great things for the community that I was certainly didn't want to be a hypocrite and then bring back <laughs> something to the community that potentially was, you know, definitely was deadly. And so we, um, you know, I moved it again to September. So I partnered with the CDC and um, through them and coming up with some safety protocols, we really had a pretty safe pageant. And Deborah, as we know from reading the papers, those who held large events that ended up in massive uh, uh, outbreaks, you definitely wouldn't want, oh, the Mrs. Main pageant caused. So I want to start off with Mrs. Main, if you don't uh, mind. Uh, and, and talk to you. You, uh, where do you work? So I work for Colby College in Waterville, Maine. Uh, so I've been fortunate because we are taking an aggressive approach towards COVID-19 uh, and as our students are all back on campus. But since the second week in August, we are tested either two to three times a week, all staff, all faculty, all students. So I am being tested for COVID-19 two times a week. Two times a week? Two times a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. And if, that is because I am on campus two days a week. If I was on campus any more than that, it would be three times oh my a goodness. week. I also have an app that I have to go to daily and report any symptoms. Um, so I feel very fortunate where I'm employed because they are doing an excellent job and making sure that we're containing it but providing a safe place for our students to actually experience a liberal arts education. And Megan, what is your, uh, what is your, uh, your capacity at Colby? So I am an Associate Director of Alumni Relations and Director <laughs> of 25th Reunions. Now I need to share this two moments, two friends. First of all, my grandson is a freshman at Colby just entered from Scarborough after hitting the state champion home run. I've always got to put that in. Uh, uh, he was uh, going to go to Bowdoin, but ended up at Colby. And another dear friend, uh, Richard Whitmore, mm -hmm. a well-known name at Colby, perhaps yes. the winningest uh, coach in basketball history in Maine, uh, at least college coach. Uh, Dick Whitmore was a fraternity brother of mine at Bowdoin. Uh, he has a, a nice store in Scarborough, and so I have a lot of Colby connections, and the Bowdoin-Colby rivalry was one of the most fun to deal with. Uh, and now we're going to go to Miss Maine for America, uh, Nicole. Uh, and Nicole, this is the second time you've done this pageant? Yes, it is. And the first time uh, was when I judged, and I remembered you when you, when you showed up. Yes. And, and, and where do you work, uh, uh, Nicole? So I work um, as a Dean of Students in Minot. 
So it's an elementary school, mine at Consolidated School. And you're the what? The Dean of Students. The, the, so first of all, <laughs> I got the Dean of Students, I got Colby College, I yes. couldn't have two. And so one of the things I want to talk to you folks about is two uh, musical icons passed away this week. One was Mac Davis, who I had the pleasure of meeting with Priscilla Presley five years ago. A lovely man, wonderful man. And also uh, the icon, Helen Reddy, who did the song, I Am Woman. And I saw her sing that the other night on the news. And can we agree, I'll start off with you first, uh, Megan. Can we agree that that song uh, became the forerunner for the women's movement when she says, I am strong, I am invincible. Isn't that pretty much what this pageant's all about? Absolutely, could not agree more. So like Nicole, this was not my first year competing in the pageant. I've competed in previous years. And the reason why I came back is because of what we're able to do with the community and the strength that you feel when you're around other women. I think strong, empowered women lift each other up. They don't tear each other down. And that is what this program is about. And I just feel extremely honored to be able to now represent it as Mrs. Man America 2020. Well, uh, I want to say congratulations to you because I have to say, uh, I've been a pageant person all my life. Uh, my cousin was Mrs. Maine uh, quite a few years before Deb was, and my niece was the first one up in the Miss American pageant. Uh, I have loved these ever since I was a boy. And it was a dream come true to have relatives in the family and to watch my niece on, on the Miss America stage. So, uh, uh, Nicole, you're going to Vegas. I am going and to Vegas. When's that going to be? So it's going to be in January, at the end of January. The end of January. Yes. And so they think Vegas has opened up enough so you folks can go out there? We're hoping so, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll get more details as it gets closer, of course. But right now, we're crossing our fingers and hoping it all works out. So. Did you go to Vegas too, Deb? So when I won Mrs. Maine, we actually went to Palm Springs. Oh, we went to Palm Springs? Yes. Yeah, so uh, my cousin, uh, Jill, went to Vegas and appeared at the same hotel that Elvis Presley had appeared at. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'll tell you something, when you go to Vegas, and you're going in an official capacity and you're walking around with your pageant stuff and your, 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 uh, your sashes, uh, you are going to be so popular. They're going to have so many foil <laughs> opportunities. I mean, plus, you know you're going to get hit on, right? <laughs> You know that's going to happen. Her husband's like 6'9", so they might not want oh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. they're going to think your husband is a bodyguard. Right. You know, is my husband's a hockey player. My, so. right. Was he a hockey player? Yeah. Be, oh yes. my God. Where did he yeah. play hockey? So he went, he graduated from St. Don's High School. Sure. Uh, and hockey played school. there. Yeah. And then he went to college. He got a full scholarship for hockey. And then he was actually signed out of college and played in the EJHL. Um, I am not a hockey person prior to meeting my husband, so I could be giving you completely incorrect information. Um, and it was prior to me meeting him. But he played in Pensacola, Florida. He played in Salt Lake City, Utah. He also played in Charleston, South Carolina. But he and eventually decided he wanted to come back to Maine, settle down in Maine, and raise his family in Maine. Um, and now he owns two hockey organizations. What? Yeah, so he owns Maine Moose Hockey, uh, which has kids all the way from age eight all the way up to 18. And then he also has a junior hockey team which plays out of Auburn called Twin City Thunder. I have a three-year-old daughter and a 16-month-old son. <laughs> so, I think the three-year-old girl the three -year -old is yes, a hockey So player. my three-year-old daughter definitely, we just bought her her first pair of skates no for way. Christmas. No way. Uh, we she'll be a hockey player. When hockey season was over to give her some ice time, but obviously COVID hit. Uh, <laughs> And they yeah. decided to remove the ice from the rink for sure. safety precautions. So I'm sure this winter she will be making her way on the ice. Well, some of my very best friends from Bowden were hockey players. Doug Brown, uh, who was actually from Waterville, uh, of Orthopedic Associates. He was a hockey captain, dear friend of mine. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've always been impressed uh, with hockey players. My friends at Bowden said, do you want to play? I went out and played one fraternity game and said, you guys have got to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nicole, uh, athletics in your family at all? Absolutely. So my family is a big athlete. So my uncle actually originally thought he was going to be an Olympic skier. Really? And then went into acting. So it didn't work out for him. But <laughs> um, And then I played, I was an athlete my whole life. I actually did field hockey. It's not quite ice, but I did no, field. field I never, big. I never understood like being able to hit the ball on both sides. All because right. in field hockey, it's just one. So <laughs> right. and her, basketball. Her, her uncle's a pretty small time uh, actor though. And yeah. who would that be? Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> Get that! <laughs>
Look, look, look. He's Stop the interview. Oh my, your uncle is Patrick. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We're Dr. Dreamy. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Dreamy. You I'm have got to be. So. Oh I'm my goodness. Me, so. yep. <laughs> you know, Nicole, yes. I got I to gotta tell you something I'm very impressed with. Yeah. Uh, you definitely didn't drop that name on me in the interview <laughs> last year. Uh, yeah. well, uh, thank you so much, Dip, for mentioning it. Yeah. He is a wonderful person. So he is. You know? It's he a is. wonderful family. Yes. Yeah. His, her mom, Mary, um, Mary Dempsey, Mary Dempsey yeah. has yep. done a tremendous amount of things, certainly, mm -hmm. for that. And so he would be related well. to how he's your... He's my mother's brother. Your mother's brother. Yes. And, and originally from where? They're from um, Buckfield, actually. <laughs> really? Buckfield, they are, yes. Yep. And they created the Patrick Dempsey Center for Cancer, Hope, and Healing in of Lewiston. Course. Yes. So and they, the, the bike around Maine. You got and, it. And, yeah, the Dempsey Challenge. We just had it last weekend, but it was virtual due oh, to COVID. Oh, I, did you do it? Did you participate? I did not pr participate this year, but right. typically I run and sometimes I cycle. It just depends, but typically I do the 5K. Well, so. uh, you know, I'm going to be... Uh, interested in bringing you in my house and showing the autographs oh, of the famous people that I know. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Patrick Dempsey is right. pretty much uh, to yeah. to top of the food chain in terms of TV acting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is he? I don't know. No, no. Without, without question, yeah. a wonderful yeah. man. Deb, getting back to the pageant, uh, when they go to Vegas, how many days will that be? So they're going to be there the 22nd to the 29th. Um, really, they'll fly out a day earlier just because it's in January. I'm a little nervous about the weather, so I figured it would be safer to get them out a day early, and then they'll come back, you know, the day after the show. So. Okay. And they'll stay at what hotel? The Westgate. Okay, the Westgate. Oh, my yeah. nice hotel because there's no bad and hotels. And they, they actually <laughs> will visit the Elvis Presley suite that mm -hmm. he... He uh, had the whole time when he was performing. Right. Uh, by the way, my last Derry Runlet show, uh, two of them, which Josh uh, uh, did for me, it was all about Elvis and my knowing Priscilla Presley and my knowing. Mm -hmm. I interviewed Sandy Martindale, Elvis's ex-girlfriend, who was in several movies with him. I did a live interview uh. Uh, with uh, Josh, uh, taping it. I call. I actually called her in California. She answered the phone, uh, and we chatted for about ten minutes. So uh, Elvis Presley, by the way, is still in Vegas. He's still there. He's yeah, everywhere. yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, when people say, oh, they, people have forgot about Elvis. Not in Vegas. So yeah. uh, when you're no. out there, tell him I said hi because you'll see him about 50 times. <laughs> exactly. uh, uh, before we close, I, I just want, want to say to each of you how proud I am to be associated with this show and how proud I am to have you be the first guest on my new show on Channel 5, which is called Me, Period on 5, Me on 5. And um, uh, I want to thank you so much for coming. And uh, so uh, now we're going to head to the park for our lobster roll segment. And I'm going to tell you, this is going to be over the top. <laughs> no one has ever talked more about a lobster roll than I'm about to do today. <laughs> so, so we'll head I'm over to the park. I'm excited to eat it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Okay. Well, folks, uh, that uh, concludes the first segment of this uh, show with uh, my two queens and Deborah Pronobost. And then uh, we're going to go over to the park and I'm going to teach you folks how to do the perfect main lobster roll. So uh, we'll be back uh, after when we go to the park. Okay, so we're at Fort Williams, uh, which is where my father was stationed uh, about uh, 60 years ago uh, and uh, in the 40s. And uh, we're going to do the preparation of a lobster roll. Now, the first thing you have to remember is cooking the lobster itself. When you cook the lobster, make sure you take the rubber bands off. When you go to restaurants these days, you'll notice they don't take the bands off because it takes them too much time. But I want to tell you that if you don't take the bands off, the taste of the rubber gets into the claw meat, especially on soft shell lobsters. Now, somebody might debate me on that, but my daughter, who was a chemical engineer, told me what happens in the breakdown of the chemicals. So first thing is, take the bands off before you cook the lobsters. Also, make sure you get fresh lobsters. The fresher the lobster, the better. And make sure you cook them the right amount of time. Not too long, not too short. And when you get done with the lobsters, let them sit. Uh, and when you pick out the lobster meat, make sure you dry it with a paper towel. You don't want slimy lobster meat going into your lobster roll. So ladies, we're gonna start off with, we've, uh, we've picked the lobster and you got your gloves on. Yep. And so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is, is to uh, chop the lobster. Now most of this has already been chopped, but you wanna chop it in pieces that uh, are, are bite sized, for example, uh, these right here, these, this is a little too large right here. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they're in bite-sized pieces. Why do you want to do that? Because when you buy a lobster roll at some places and you take a piece of the lobster and you eat the lobster and you pull out, you pull out some big giant piece 
and all you've got is a half a lobster roll left with, with no lobster in it, just the bread. So the pieces want to be bite-sized. Then we mix in uh, the special uh, mayonnaise uh, ingredients, and I use a, an ingredient of two-thirds mayonnaise, one-third Miracle Whip. The, mm. Yes, two-thirds mayonnaise, one-third Miracle Whip, uh, and nothing else. Now, there's something else that I put in uh, the lobster roll, which uh, you can uh, deny or say you'd rather not have it, and this would be uh, tamale. This is the ah. liver of the lobster. Yep. I put in just a tiny bit of tamale, which enhances the flavor of the lobsters, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also put in, uh, you can either have lettuce uh, uh, on your lobster roll, and it's gonna be crisp lettuce. I'm gonna tell you folks, when you go to a restaurant and they serve you a lobster roll with some uh, stringy piece of lettuce in there, a wilted piece of lettuce, what good is it? It's no good. Yeah. Uh, you have to put fresh lettuce and crisp lettuce in your lobster roll, but what I prefer, instead of lettuce, is celery, which we have brought here today. And the reason why we use celery is because, as you know, when you go to a pizza place, they have celery salt, you get a hot dog celery salt. So we use uh, celery, uh, and when you bite those celery chunks, the celery bursts upon your palate and explodes both the lobster taste, <laughs> the lobster taste and the, and the celery into your lobster roll. I had to do the palate thing. And last but not least, a few scallions uh, in the sauce uh, makes for the perfect lobster roll. Now, uh, this one, I'm going to touch this one because you folks will not be touching it. One of the things you have to know about a lobster roll is, number one, this tamale here, but there is a lot of wonderful meat in uh, the lobster, uh, in this area here, uh, in between here. These, these places right here where the legs are, there is, there is a lot of uh, meat, especially on big lobsters. And this meat is very sweet. And it, it goes very well in lobster roll. It takes a lot of time to pick it out, uh, but it's worth it. Trust me, restaurants do not pick out this part of the lobster. Neither and these that. are also pretty good. <laughs> if you can uh, split them up so that the meat actually comes out, didn't in this one, they actually go well in these things because it's very sweet meat that will go inside uh, this particular lobster roll. Okay, so with that, uh, folks, I'm gonna instruct uh, these uh, young ladies on how to prepare this lobster roll and cut the things up and so uh, we'll, we'll take a break and, and, and get into that part of it. One other thing about lobsters folks and that is these things right here. These things you find on the end of every, every lobster. And I'm going to tell you something folks, there's not much flavor in these and they have a rubber consistency. Therefore when I have these I cut these in very very small pieces. You can still use them, but don't put them in the lobster like this because it's like eating a piece of rubber. And if you go in and order a lobster roll from somebody and they serve you a lobster roll with a lot of these, well, you're going to know that's a problem. The other thing is this that's different about uh, my lobster rolls. Most of the lobster rolls that are sold around uh, the Portland area do not have tail meat. They do mostly claw and knuckle. But I'm going to tell you something. The tail meat is very flavorful. And if you cut it in small pieces, as Deb's doing, uh, uh, then you, you'll find uh, that the tail meat is excellent meat to have in a lobster. Okay. Okay, last but not least, folks, we got a little bit of these scallions in here. Look at a few of these scallions. And there you go. Separate for the flavor there. And the celery, little celery pieces. Oh, perfect. Oh, who did the celery here? That was me. Oh, so much. Oh, so well, so well done. I'm going to add it to my resume. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. We're going to mix this all around. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that looks delicious. And for those of you that want lettuce, uh, Deb, I'll let you take the lettuce and cut it in little pieces if you want, if you and put it on a plate.
So every uh, lobster roll uh, feast has to end with uh, whoopie pies. And we have whoopie pies for you folks here. Uh, take off the label. And we have these delicious whoopie pies uh, available for all of you. What do you think? I thought they'd be a little bigger and maybe dipped in chocolate, but they look not bad. Uh, well, okay, Deb, but well, you can have one anyway if you don't mind. <laughs> I take that one out. <laughs> So folks, we end the meal with this little gadget that I bought in Grand Junction, Colorado. And you need this at the end of every lobster roll lunch. This little character is a toothpick, a toothpick dispenser. Okay? <laughs> so I'll have you all, you don't have to do this on camera. Okay. But you will need these toothpicks, of course, because the lobster chunks end up someplace uh, where they shouldn't be. So this little character here. I love this little guy. I bought him in Grand Junction, and uh, you can use him uh, after we uh, close the segment. But I want to uh, say to both of you, Megan, I have this gift certificate I'm going to give you uh, to take to Vegas, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. And I just want to ask you, uh, so how, how'd you like the lobster roll? I thought it was, it was all right. It was pretty good. I'm, I'm a tough critic. I grew up in Down East Maine, so I've had a lot of lobster rolls in my life. Well, I mean, like, do you have any like specific criticisms of it, or just that you just? I mean, I'm not really a celery person, so oh, 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 okay. I think the celery might have just taken it down a notch. For oh, me. really? Well, uh, thanks for that tepid uh, <laughs> review. Uh, so, Nicole, I also have uh, this gift certificate for you for for, for Vegas, awesome. and hope you'll enjoy it. And, and and how did you like the lobster roll? Well. First, how much is the gift card for? Oh, well, it, it's enough to have a nice lunch in Vegas. Not dinner, maybe, but, but a nice nice lunch. Yeah. Okay, so maybe like $30, $40? Well, no, no, Nicole, it's like three figures. It's three figures. Oh, okay. So like $100? Well, yeah, it's $100. Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not $6.99, but it's, right. it's 100 Okay. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right, perfect. That's great. Thanks, Jerry. And, and how about the lobster roll? How was that? It, it was it was good. It was okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, just let me yeah. tell you folks something, okay, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure. There are not thousands, but millions, millions of people all around the world that love my lobster roll. I'll tell you something. I have people writing to me from Zimbabwe, from France, from Norway, asking for my lobster roll recipe. And when people walk around this park, they come up to me and they go, aren't you the guy uh, that does those famous uh, lobster rolls? And I say, yes, I am. That's right. Uh, folks, a little tribute to Donald Trump, who, by the way, we found out uh, has uh, caught the virus. And I want to close this show by sending my prayers, my best wishes to the president, to the first lady and his staff. And I want to thank you folks so much for coming on Me On Five, uh, my inaugural show. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for having us.